Hi friends, and welcome back to another video. This time I'm showing you my process for how I paint my digital goodies for my Patreon. I make one of these every month, and they're a lot of fun because I basically just doodle whatever I want, um, and I also use these for my own bullet journal, so it's a good time. Uh, I'm kind of going off script for this video, usually I try to script out my videos a little bit, but I thought it might be fun to just chat and uh, ramble, because <laughs> it's kind of a long video and I don't really know how long to write a script uh, for this, so yeah, anyway. This month I wanted to doodle a bunch of kind of spoopy Halloween-y things, uh, because I'm not really drawing a lot of spooky things this month, uh, since it's cozy tober and I've just been painting a lot of cozy things based on the prompt list that I made. Um, so this is my, like, my only chance to make some spooky things. Uh, not that I do a lot of spooky things, these are all like more spooky than spooky, if you know what I mean, because I don't handle spooky things well. Uh, I scare very easily, but I like things that are cute, so. Yeah, okay. So for my digital goodies, I almost always just use a single brush, actually. I use the dry ink brush in the inking collection as one of the standard Procreate brushes. I do use different brushes depending on the illustrations, but for my digital goodies, I almost always cons consistently use this one single brush, just because I really like the texture and it's simple and easy, and I try to make it kind of low stress for myself, since, you know, I make one of these every month. Yeah, but otherwise, I also really like the hard air brush in Procreate, and I always use the uh, B6 brush for sketching, which is also one of the Procreate original brushes. And I also really like the um, Max Pack brushes. I have the watercolor set, and I have the retro Max Pack, and they're both fantastic. Um, the watercolor set I still need to practice a little with. But the retro brush set is like a gouache, squash, kind of. It's, it's supposed to look like gouache brushes, and I really, really like those. I painted a portrait of my siblings last month with, their, with, the, uh, Max Pack, with the retro Max Pack brushes, and I had a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. But for this one, we're, we're going simple. We're just using the dry ink brush. Um, I did sketch everything out pre uh, before I started filming uh, using the B6 brush, as I mentioned before, because I always use that for sketching. I really like that it looks like an actual pencil and it has like um, a line variation in it. I just think it looks very natural. But yeah, um, this little doodle that I'm working on right now is a little pumpkin lady and it's based off of um, Rachel Maxey's one of her recent videos, uh, her pumpkin, vintage pumpkin lady videos where she made a paper mache pumpkin head and uh, made some vintage clothes and she wasn't super proud of her DIY but I thought it was super cute so I doodled it. <laughs> Here I am just doing some shading. I keep these stickers super super simple so I don't really do any fancy things with my shading or anything um, in a more complex illustration, I'll use different brushes and um, I'll set my shading to multiply and things like that just to make it um, more cohesive. But for these, since I'm using a very limited color palette, it's pretty easy to make everything look cohesive. And I'm just kind of doodling, um, using some, doing some little line work, um, doing some shading, just based off of like slightly changing the color make shading colors if that makes sense but yeah um, it's super simple and chill for me to make these I think they're really fun and I think they always turn out pretty cute I also um, am very bad at at organizing my layers if you notice um, I don't name any of my layers I also don't have any like rhyme or reason to how I do my layers I do not recommend this <laughs> It gets very confusing after a while, and also the um, the transparent background thing that Procreate does, where you like swipe the layer with uh, two fingers. I don't know if you have to swipe it with two fingers. I always swipe it with two fingers, um, where the background becomes transparent and you can only color on top of things that you've already colored. 
That function is my best friend. I love it so much. It's so useful. All right, we're moving on to a different little drawing. Now I'm doodling a little cat, a little black cat in a pumpkin. Um, yeah, as you can tell, none of these things are actually scary. All of these things are just spoopy because again, I'm not good at scary things. What are your thoughts on Hall Halloween? Do you like Halloween? I was never really much of a Halloween person growing up, actually. Um, I don't know. I wasn't that into dressing up in costume. I liked trick-or-treating, but then my parents always took away my candy, so I wasn't like that into trick-or-treating because there wasn't much of a point. And then my dad would eat all my candy. Um, so I think I like Halloween more now as an adult because I can just buy my own candy and nobody can take it from me. Except Alan, sometimes he eats my candy too. But I also eat his candy, so it's okay. Um, yeah. I don't know what else to talk about. Oh, color palettes. I got, I, so I asked on Instagram if there were any questions that um, people wanted to ask me about how I draw digitally. And one of the uh, questions I got a lot was how I pick my color palettes. Um, for this one, I actually didn't pick a color palette. I mean, it has very it has a very cohesive set of colors, um, and that's because when I started doodling, I kind of had this idea of what I wanted the overall feeling to look like. I wanted everything to feel warm and cozy, just like um, my cozy tober paintings that I've been doing in watercolor. So, to me, uh, cozy colors are like. Um, muted oranges and reds and creams and you know the colors that I used in, in this doodle goodie. Uh, yeah so I kind of had that idea in mind and so that's kind of just what I went with and then once I had the main illustration of the pumpkin lady I just kind of used the colors I used in the pumpkin lady to paint the rest of it and that's how I make kind of a cohesive sticker set. Um, make everything look like they belong together and I kind of do that with most of my digital illustrations I don't really come up with color palettes um, I don't use the color palette function in procreate even though I probably should um, yeah I'm very disorganized when I do my digital illustrations but uh, yeah so I guess I don't really have that much advice for picking color palettes because I just kind of wing it most of the time um, but uh, I have a pretty good sense of like colors and what colors I like and what colors I like to use and I think that just comes with like a lot of experience with just drawing in general since I've been drawing for my whole life. I've been drawing since I was four, three or four um, and then like taking classes since I was seven so and now I'm 25 I think yeah so I've had a lot of experience with, you know, picking colors and painting and things like that. So, um, but yeah, um, if you want to get better at using color palettes, one of my big, like, hacks, I guess, is to use um, color palette generators uh, from that, like, U UX UI people use. Um, one of my favorites is, I think, coolers.co, C-O-O-L-O-R-S.co. Um, they basically do, it basically just does randomized color palette generation and you can like tap through and look through a bunch of different color palettes and see what speaks to you the most. I also really like the color palette generators that, um, that are generated from like photographs. So yeah, those um, can help you gain a better sense of colors if colors are something that's difficult for you. And then um, just experiment, see what colors you think work well together. Um, I mean, there's a lot of color theory as well for for picking colors, uh, which can get, it, it's not that complicated, but um, you can also learn about color theory. I didn't really have a formal, formal education with that. Um, most of my color choices are just based on colors that I like and things that I think look good together. and. I mean, I did, I did, I do know about color theory, and like I have read up on it, but I don't really think about it consciously when I'm picking colors. So, yeah. All right. 
Here I am drawing a little pumpkin pie. I have never once in my life eaten pumpkin pie, but I know a lot of people really like it. Alan really likes it. And you know, maybe this year will be the year that I finally try pumpkin pie. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just, pumpkin pie is weird, man. I don't understand it. Pumpkin, like pumpkins are a vegetable. <laughs> so I don't understand why you make pie out of it. Um, it's like people who put marshmallows in their sweet potatoes. I also don't understand that. Sweet potatoes are already sweet. They don't need marshmallows. Those are my hot takes for this video. Um, as you can tell, this is not scripted. I am just rambling. Uh, but yeah, if you are a marshmallow sweet potato person or a pumpkin pie person, please don't be mad at me. Um, or, you know, educate me <laughs> in the comments for why you think they're good. I do not understand. But yeah. All right. Now I'm doing a little apple. I have, I looked, so I looked through my old digital goodies recently and um, I doodle apples a lot. It turns out I really like apples. <laughs> I love eating apple pie, so maybe that's why. I always doodle apples around the same like season too, around apple picking season. I draw a lot of apples. But yeah. I recently learned how to paint, how to draw a new leaf shape, which is what I'm doodling there. Uh, very proud of myself. I always draw the same little leaf twig things, and now I can draw little maple leaves which feels very appropriate because Canadian Thanksgiving was very recently and um, I am Canadian and so, you know, we're big fans of the maple leaf. Uh, yeah, so very proud of myself for learning how to doodle those. <laughs> cider donut. It does end up kind of looking like a bagel, so it can be a bagel or a cider donut depending on, you know, what you prefer. And I was trying to do this like negative painting technique that I did for my, um, my Cozy Tober painting. And it doesn't look as good when it's not in watercolor, so you'll see later after quite a long attempt uh, that I gave up. <laughs> but. Yeah, if you want to see this Saturday donut, but with my original idea of negative painting, you should check out my Instagram because I did it in watercolor and it does not look nearly as good uh, when I tried to, tried to do it this way. Not sure why. Have you ever had a Saturday donut? I recently learned um, through my Cozy Tober drawings that a lot of people have never had a cider donut and I was not totally aware that cider donuts were regional but I guess that makes sense because apple orchards um I guess apples only grow in like specific areas of the country or of the world so I guess it makes sense that cider donuts are not universal but I got a lot of questions of like what are cider donuts and let me tell you cider donuts are the best thing in the world <laughs> they're so good um, you can always get them when you go apple picking. And our favorite cider donuts come from this farm that is in upstate New York. And I cannot remember what it's called. But they make the best cider donuts. We went to a different apple farm this year, um, one in New Jersey, and their donuts were good, but they were not as good, which was sad. But apparently they're not hard to make, so I'm gonna learn how to make them. And if I do learn how to make them successfully, I'm definitely gonna share the recipe. All right, um, now I am doodling a little moon bunny in celebration of Mid-Autumn Festival, which was earlier this month. Um, I actually used to draw little moon bunnies, not little moon bunnies, but like little brown bunnies like this um, on all of my orders. So I used to use a Sharpie and draw this little bunny on every order that I got. And I don't do them anymore, but Really, really OG CC's Art Cafe customers will recognize this bunny because they used to be on all of my orders. Um, and now I'm doodling two little washi strips. So I doodle washi strips um, for every single one of my uh, digital goodies, at least I think as of this year, just because I personally really love using little washi strips. Um, 
I wish washi tape was this easy to make where you could just like draw it and then cut it out. But no, you need a manufacturer, which is annoying. Over the course of this year, I think I've had, I've drawn at least two strips of washi for every digital goodie, which is quite a few washi tapes at this point. Maybe I'll make a collection of them. Let me know if you would like to see little doodled washi tape stickers or more of them because I have a couple in my shop, but I could, I could make more. I really like how this little moon bunny washi strip turned out. I think it turned out super cute. Um, and I really like the colors I chose in this digital goodie. Here I actually had a bit of a struggle because I decided to draw my washi strip a little bit higher than my sketch um, just to make room for like cutting and it made drawing in the little candy shapes really difficult because I kept trying to follow my sketch but obviously my sketch was offset and I was too lazy to fix it so maybe don't be like me. <laughs> plans for Halloween. My little sister keeps telling us that we need to dress up, but Ellen and I aren't going to go anywhere because we're in New York and um, we're adults, so we can't go trick-or-treating and we don't like parties and also there's a pandemic so it's not like we'd actually go to a party anyway. So yeah, but she's dressing up. She apparently is going to dress up as a wolf, uh, which I think is cute. So. Are you dressing up? <laughs> Are you planning on doing anything for Halloween? I think I'm probably just gonna stay at home and watch Nightmare Before Christmas because um, that seems appropriate. And I watch it every year, even though Tim Burton is um, questionable. Have a, she, he's, he's, yeah, he's questionable. Anyway. I'm doing these little like star doodles around everywhere just because I actually really like using them in my bullet journal. Um, when I decorate, they fill in all of the little spots so I don't have to doodle little stars. I doodle the stars here so I don't have to doodle the stars later, basically. Yeah, alright. Um, so the video is almost over. So thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for listening to me ramble. I hope you're all doing well. I love you all very, very much. Um, I have links for petitions to sign and places to donate down in the description box below as always and um thank you so much for being part of my cozy little space on the internet bye friends see you next week